We've now seen what the binomial theorem looks like, what it means, and we've looked at some applications on how to expand a binomial using the binomial theorem. In this section, we're going to look at some more specific questions. For example, determine the fourth term in the expansion of this binomial. Now, we're referring to the binomial theorem as it is written here. Please note, if your binomial theorem looks a little bit different, or you use some app to expand it, the fourth term will not necessarily be the same fourth term. So this is a subjective question, but we are referring to the theorem as it stands over there. So if I've got the binomial theorem, I've got 2x minus 5y squared to the power 10. I know is the sum when r goes from 0 to 10 of 10cr, 2x to the power 10 minus r, and minus 5y squared to the power r. So if we tidy this up, and we need to tidy this up just to make our lives easier, that is r goes from 0 to 10 of 10cr. My coefficient 2 to the power 10 minus r, I've got a minus 5. You can use it as minus 5 or as minus 1 times 5. Just don't forget about the minus to the power r times x's. I've got x to the power 10 minus r and y, y to the power 2r. So when is it in this format? It's looking a little bit tidier. Now let's see what are we asking for. We're asking for the fourth term. So term four, I'm just using that notation. What is the value of r going to be? Because this expansion gives me all 11 terms. Where the first term, r is naught. The second term, r is 1. The third term, r is 2. The fourth term, r is going to be equal to, excuse me, r is going to be equal to 3. So my fourth term is where r is 3. So you must determine what r am I looking for. So this fourth term is going to look like this. r is equal to 3, so we're not looking at the summation anymore. We're only looking at one specific term. 10c3, 2 to the power 10 minus 3, which is 2 to the power 7, minus 5 to the power 3, x to the power 7, y to the power 2 times 3, y to the power 6. Now, this is my whole coefficient, so we can see it's going to be a negative number. Now, it's quite a big number. It's minus 1920 million, minus 1.92 million, x to the power 7, y to the power 6. All right, so sometimes these numbers get a bit big to write out, but just understand that I get my coefficient from the numbers I have here. All right, so let's look at another type of question that we can ask. So this is asking for a specific term in the expansion. Let's ask for another term, the seventh term. So now I already know term 7, r is going to be equal to 6. But let's first look what the general term, what it's going to look like. So 1 minus 2 over x to the power 18. We definitely don't want to expand that one with all 19 terms. It's the sum when r goes from 0 to 18 of 18 cr. 1 to the power 18 minus r, that one's quite nice, times minus 2 over x to the power 18 of, to the power r. So that is r going from 0 to 18 of 18 cr. Let's get the coefficient together. 1 to any power is just going to be 1, so I'm not going to even look at that. But I've got the minus 2 to the power r. How many x's do I have? x to the power minus r, because it's minus 2 divided by x. So term 7, or you can call it T7, R is going to be equal to 6. So T7 is then going to be equal to 18 C6 minus 2 to the power 6. So I'm going to get a positive number, X to the power minus 6. And again, this is a very big number. So if you want to leave it like that, you can, or you can calculate that. It's 1,188,696 x to the power minus 6, or over x to the power 6. 
All right, in the next one, we're asking a very specific question. Find the coefficient of x to the power 11. Now, I don't know which term that's going to be. I need to figure out when do I get to x to the power 11, because here's an x cubed and a, here's an x to the power minus 2. So when will I get to x to the power 11? So we start the same way. We look at what it looks like in general. 2x cubed with the sigma notation minus 3 over x squared to the power 12. That's the sum when r goes from 0 to 12 of 12cr. Then I've got 2x cubed to the power 12 minus r. And I've got minus 3 over x squared to the power r. So if we tidy that up, r goes from 0 to 12 of 12cr. Let's look at our coefficients. I've got 2 to the power 12 minus r, and I've got minus 3 to the power r. Keep the minus with the coefficients and with the constants. Don't put the minus with the x. Then I've got x to the power cubed, 12 minus r, so it's 36 minus 3r. And this term gives me an x to the power minus 2r. So, we can tidy up these x's some more. That's the sum when r goes from 0 to 12 of 12cr, 2 to the power 12 minus r, minus 3 to the power r. So I've got x to the power 36 minus 5r. So that's what I've got. I've done a lot of work. Let's go back to the question and see what we're trying to figure out. The coefficient of x to the power 11. So I want to know... I want to find the r value because r will get me to a coefficient because this represents the coefficient. But what is the r value? Well, my x's exponent is 11. So I want to find r for which 36 minus 5r is equal to 11. That means 5r is 36 minus 11, which is 25. So r is equal to 5. So I have establish the value of r, and that was what I was looking for. So let me answer my question. My question says, what is the coefficient of x to the power 11? Well, this number in front is the coefficient. So it's 12c5, 2 to the power 12 minus 5, which is 7, minus 3 to the power 5. That is my coefficient. Now, don't do the x to the power 11 because the coefficient is the number in front of x. I'm not going to multiply that out. You can do that, but that will be the coefficient of x to the power 11. All right, another type of question I can ask is what is the constant term? So this means they, by asking the question, I'm saying there will be a term without any x's. So where will that term lie? So again, we're going to look for an r value for which my x there are no x's, which means my exponent of x is naught. So if I've got 3 minus x, 3 over x minus x to the power 8, that is r going from 0 to 8 of r, 8cr, 3 over x to the power 8 minus r, and minus x to the power r. Now here's where the minus is going to cause trouble if you don't pay attention. That is r going from 0 to 8 of 8cr. Let's get all the constants together for a coefficient. From the first term, my constant is 3 to the power 8 minus r. From here, I've got a minus 1 to the power r. All right, don't attach the minus to the x. Get the numbers out front, the constants out front. Then my x's, from this part, I've got x to the power, it's 1 over x, so it's x to the power minus 1, so it's minus 8 plus r. And over here, I've got x to the power r. So putting that all together, the sum when r goes from 0 to 8 of 8cr, 3 to the power 8 minus r, minus 1 to the power r, and x to the power minus 8 plus 2r. All right, now it's neat and tidy. Let's go back to our question. What is the constant term? So I want the value of r for which my x's have an exponent of 0. So I want minus 8 plus 2r to be 0. So 2r is 8, so the value of r is 4. So now I've established 4, so therefore I can conclude my constant term is when r is 4, so it's 8c4, 3 to the power 4, minus 1 to the power 4. And you can find that constant, that's 5,670. 
it's not too big a number, so we can write it out. So that's the constant term. term. So if you had expanded this one totally with a binomial theorem, somewhere in the middle, we'll have a term that doesn't have x's. R is equal to 4, so which term is that? That'll be the fifth term. So this is the kind of application questions we can ask using the binomial theorem, which is nicer to ask because we don't have to expand the whole thing and write out all the terms. So that is the binomial theorem.